What's up everybody, Coach Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Overwatch video, and in this video I'm going to be breaking down 9 simple tips that they're not hard, they're not difficult to follow, but if you do incorporate them, you're going to win more ranked games, and it's as simple as that. So if you're struggling to get into the next rank, or you want to climb to Diamond, Masters, Grandmaster, or even beyond, then do yourself a favor, watch this at the end of the video, but go to the Game Leap website right now, we have a special 50% off holiday sale. You've been working hard, so it's time to reward yourself with with tons and tons of SR and a holiday rank up. So go check it out in the links down below. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now, you know, some characters take a lot of hours to master. You have to put thousands and thousands of hours to master a certain character before you can get them to do exactly what they're good at. And these characters I'm going to suggest you learn are not those characters. There are some characters that are really, really easy to learn. And luckily for you, they hard counter so many strategies. Think of characters like Reaper, Sombra, Brig, and Farah. Characters that at at least the counterplay or the counterplay style is not very hard. Reaper's very good at anti-dive. He just sits with his team and he punishes anyone that gets close. Sombra can just sit up on the high ground, perma hacking targets. Brig just exists. And Farah can, you know, play really far away and spam down enemies that just can't contest her when there's no hit scan. These characters at the elementary level are not that hard to learn. And even if you don't put that many hours into them, you can learn these with ease and whip them out in certain scenarios that are guaranteed to get you some free wins and free value. Value. Think about a point like Eichenwald, you pop out of spawn, you walk up, and you know, hey, look, they have no hit scan. Go back to spawn, swap to far, maybe get your support to swap to Mercy if they're your duo or whatever the case may be, and just farm them up with ease. Sure, they'll swap off for that second point, but then you just swap back to your main. You got that first point, because how many times have you gotten first point held and you never even capped? This is a free cap. Think about other characters like, I don't know, Sombra. You have a really, really pesky Hammond that no one will focus down. Swap to Sombra. I'm sure you play Sombra for a couple of times hack that guy a couple of times he's gonna swap off then you can go back to your main now learning how to do this is not very difficult and you're gonna be winning more games and not even having to try for it so definitely try this tip out in your next set of games now the next big tip i got for you is consistently ult comboing and before you say oh okay you said this tip before but here's the thing you need to be doing it before anyone dies at this point i've probably vod reviewed over a hundred different people in low ranks and the number one thing i see when players try to execute an old combo and they lose the fight it's because they try to do it when they already are down people they're down one two three people i've seen it in every situation you could possibly imagine and the thing is if you start that ultimate combo when you have a full fighting force six people then you're way more likely to win because the conversion from getting those first kills to actually winning the team fight is astronomically high this means when you have an ultimate combo, you do not wait. You do not try to take your time. You do not wait for the six-man grab. You go in, you grab what you can. Even if you're grab dragoning two people, doesn't matter. 6v4, you're going to win that. But if you allow your team to get picked off and then it's a 4v4, maybe you could lose that. And this is a really important tip that you need to do every single time. And on top of this, some abilities should almost always be comboed. And yes, I know that some abilities you see like the perfect dragon. You're like, oh, look, there's three people. Let me dragon. And then you get no. Nobody. Now, yes, there will be some scenarios where you could hypothetically get some value out of a solo ultimate. However, some ultimates are guaranteed value if you combo. We just talked about Grab Dragon. That is a 100% guaranteed value up against enemies that do not have their support ultimate. Now, there is a world where you could grab and get no value. And there's also a world where you could drag it and get no value. But if you combine them together and the enemy doesn't have a support ultimate or you use it before they get that support ultimate, you are guaranteed to get value. And this is what I'm talking about. In order to climb, you need to build consistency because not every game is winnable however having a consistent amount of ultimate impact every single game is going to allow you to have a consistently high win rate get that 60 65 percent win rate and over the course of enough games you are going to climb out of your rank now moving to the third big tip that i got for you and this is push up and get staggers and i can't repeat this enough because it is so so important for everyone to get right when you are pushing a cart for example it is far more worth your time to leave one person on cart and then the rest of you push up and try to kill enemies and stagger them out because a lot of times enemies are going to be thinking they're safe they're going to be standing with like two people way in front of their team because they assume you're not going to push them but if you do you're going to get some free kills on top of that way too many people are allowing enemies to get out like if you just had a team fight and the enemies are leaving they're just trying to regroup as two people and you have your entire team do not let them escape kill them get that free ultimate charge and make them wait 
even longer before they respawn. If you think about it this way, you're almost like a traveling caravan as a team where there is no limits to where y'all could go if you want to go to a certain place. And pushing up on enemies when you have an advantage doesn't matter if they're near their spawn, doesn't matter if they're on the other side of the map, doesn't matter if it's away from the point. You can push up and get these kills because essentially these players are just isolated targets. Then we're going to the next big tip that I got for you, and it's communicate. And this is so important just for basic things that you learn that your teammates might not know. Being able to tell your teammates the ult charge of the person that killed you because you can look at your kill cam and say, hey, they're at this ult charge. Or being able to vocally ask for certain things like peel and help in communications rather than typing like crazy, rather than saying group up with me, group up with me. Being able to call stuff like, hey, I hooked their main tank, let's focus him. Or, hey, I slept this target, can someone help me kill him? Having clear communication is incredibly underrated in pretty much any team-based game. Now that being said, I'm not telling you to blame anybody, have passive aggressive statements or anything like that. That is the quickest way to actually lose a game for pretty much no reason at all. But if a player is struggling talk to them ask them what do they need do they need more peel do they need more help don't assume that they're playing bad because they're having a bad time i mean they could be a character that is getting constantly dove or they're not getting healed or whatever the case may be but the only way you're going to find out and make a plan to be more effective as a team is by opening those lines of communication now moving on to tip number five you need to be doing this every single time and it's warming up and i know i know some players and i'm not calling you out but you know who you are you roll out of bed get on your computer and instantly Q comp and the first couple games of the day I promise you your win rate is astronomically lower than your win rate any other time you see you could be an extremely good player right and maybe you deserve the next rank however if you only play six games a day and the first three games you're playing like a fraction of your potential you're playing extremely bad because you're tired you just woke up and you're just not able to perform the way you normally do well now your win rate is trash and you're gonna be stuck in that same rank over and over again and not know why well the simple solution is just to warm up make sure you always put in some practice into the heroes that you're playing some aim practice never hurts anybody no matter what character you main aim practice is always good and if you flex a lot i would highly suggest games like gun game and that's just really good for practicing all the characters and really just warming up generally on every character but the best two ways to rank up in my personal opinion are try hard free for all and just rocking a quick play i know i know this is going to take more time out of your play time but if you're going to play six games to throw three of them isn't it far better to do dedicated warm-up practice a couple of games and then just have four games that you're actually playing of comp but you win them all instead of losing three and winning three i think you already know the answer to that question now moving on to tip number six you don't need to play meta but and i put that contingency statement there because even if you are not playing meta and i think it's completely fine to not play meta at all but you still have to have a plan against it especially as you start to climb the ladder and go up against it more and more you see on top of that every composition has a weakness and the players in that composition are not guaranteed to even play it correctly so it's exploitable and that's why you don't have to play meta even if something's absolutely dominant now that being said you got to think about oh if the enemy does go double shield because that's the predominant meta and they have pro players to model their play off of what do i do to still get value on my character maybe you like to play widow Ana, whatever the case may be you still need to be thinking about what do i need to do to still have impact up against that composition maybe it's like oh i'm widow I can never snipe them on the front line because they have two shields. I need to take an off angle. I need to be far more proactive with the angles that I'm taking. Or you maybe you're playing as Ana and you say, hey, I need a position on the high ground because I need to slide in a cheeky nade here or there where they don't have this cooldown, where they don't have this cooldown. Now I can throw in my nade and get a fat nade and that's how I have impact. But the big takeaway for you is you just don't have to play meta but always have a game plan because then you'll set yourself up for success instead of just getting shut down by whatever dominant strategy is the current most play. Now moving on to tip number seven, take a note of your good teammates. You see, there's a really big problem in the Overwatch community in general, and it's when players really identify, hey, this person is throwing on my team, they're throwing, why do I always get these trash teammates? But they never take note or realize when they're getting carried. They never notice when they won that game and it felt so easy. They're like, oh man, this game felt so easy. Well, it's because your Genji got 30 freaking kills in one death. You didn't even realize that. And this is a skill that I really really encourage you to build because I always talk about making plays yourself regardless of what role you're on tank DPS or support however when you have really good teammates and you start to take note of them sometimes enabling an amazing tank can be better than making plays yourself
yourself. You don't have to solo carry every game if you can identify what teammates you have that have a certain strength and enable that even more so. Like how many times on support you just absolutely popped off. You felt like you did amazing, but there was a couple of times when an enemy came to try to kill you and your DPS bailed you out. Now, in a completely different environment where your DPS is just doing his own thing, now you die and it looks like you threw that game, but really you would have dominated if you would have just been kept alive. Same thing with the tank, a monkey. How many times have you monkey players just went through the enemy team? You're dominating, you're getting your primal rages, you get nanos, and you're just rolling through them and they can't do anything. Well, imagine if your support is, you know, trying to make plays herself, doing this on the sidelines with her DPS, whatever the case may be, and if you were just enabled, you would have been able to dominate. And I'm not saying you have to hard pocket or enable every single player you come across. In fact, I think that's the best route to never improve at all. But if you can acknowledge which of your teammates are going above and beyond, look at their skill level, and then decide who deserves a giant amount of enabling, then that can really be the huge difference maker in your games. Now, we're going to tip number eight. You need to be getting rid of bad movement mistakes. And this one's pretty simple, but all you gotta do is stop walking in straight lines and stop jumping. And players are like, what the heck? I don't jump, but I guarantee that you absolutely do. Look at any Widowmaker montage, even in the high ranks, and the Widowmaker is hitting targets when players are freaking jumping. When you're jumping, you gotta understand that you're in a static movement that is very easy to predict. You could get hooked, you could get slapped, you could get shot in the head by Hanzo, you get the picture. It is very, very easy to punish you when your movement is in the air because when you're touching the ground, the direction you can move at any one moment is, you know, instantaneous. You can instantly move right, you can instantly move left, you can instantly back up and and that creates a lot of time disparity. First off, for projectiles that have to travel, but second off, when you are traveling through the air, it's really easy for a hit scan to align their shot where you'll end up and just fire the second you cross their crosshair. Now, I'm not saying that there's never a place for jumping, because there is, especially like you're turning a corner and a Hanzo's waiting for you. If you jump last second, you can turn that corner, he'll hit you in the body. If you're McCree or something, you can flash him. But you need to be jumping with intent, and if you're just jumping randomly, which most people are doing, you are 100% creating a lot of your deaths and the best thing I could suggest for you is every single time you die please look back on your death and take a few notes of why did I die what did I do and I bet you a lot of the scenarios where you die to things like widows or other characters like that you are actually jumping or you're just walking in a straight line kind of autopiloting your movement now moving into the tip number nine and this one might be the most important tip in the entire video and it's step away when you're tilted now here's a tip that I really really like and it's the first strike of mute rule how many times has someone said something passive aggressive negative or they just flamed you in general you give them one strike and what i mean by that is the second they do this right off the bat you insta mute them and you don't unmute them and i know what you're gonna say you just said communicate communicate is gonna help us you know perform better and things like that here's the thing if a person is going to act like that they weren't being helpful in comps in the first place and tilting is the number one thing that is gonna throw your win rate you gotta understand that when you are playing a game like overwatch you need to be taking your plays and your mistakes very logically very analytically like i did this right i did this wrong this is what i need to do better but when you get tilted now all of a sudden you become emotional now your plays and what you're trying to do is going to be derived from emotion and that really creates a lot of problems instead of saying oh i messed up and died now i died i'm just gonna come back from spawn but if you get flamed for it now you're tilted now you're like i gotta make a play i gotta make a play and you do things based on emotion that logically don't make sense because you're tilted and this just can cascade and really just create a scenario where you're just not climbing at all and it has to do with your tilted you know if you talk about all of this list together you combine it you know you're not warming up you're throwing games in the beginning then you get tilted you're throwing games in the end you know it's a cycle really of being hard stuck but if you actually learn and apply all these tips to your games i can guarantee you there is no reason that you should remain hard stuck but do us have a favor right now for the 50 percent of holiday season on the game leap website we have tons and tons of advanced VOD reviews and content. I know a lot of you have been asking for more advanced content, and we got it just in time for the holiday season on the Game Leap website. So do yourself a favor, go check it out right now. But thank you so much for coming by. That's all I got for you today. I'm Coach Wilson, of course. Until next time.